Hi guys, it's Smith here with another instalment of Danger Gang. Now we are on to the month of October um, and we have just found out that everyone is seeing the creepy shadows that Frankie had been talking about. Um, so let's find out what happens next. October, dear Danny. You won't believe what happened in Freaky this month. I mean, it's strange enough here at the best of times, but throughout Halloween, throw Halloween into the mix and this place is off the scale. Freaky has an annual pumpkin competition to see who can grow the biggest one. Susie, who lives over the road from me at number eight, while her mum and dad grow massive pumpkins and enter every year. They just can't agree on how to grow the best and the biggest pumpkin though. Mr. Prune thinks you need to plant them in a bucket and water them with a watering can. Mrs. Prune thinks they grow bigger if you plant them in the greenhouse and use a spray bottle to water them. Neither of them will budge on their pumpkin growing plans, so they now enter the pumpkin competition separately, which means each year only one of them gets to win the trophy. Susie said that this year her dad was feeling super confident about his pumpkin. Apparently he's gotten something pretty special up his sleeve. The trouble is Susie's mum said she has something pretty special up her sleeve too this year. If Susie, it's Susie I feel sorry for because her mum and dad spend more time with their precious pumpkins than they do with their actual daughter. To make things even worse, over the past few weeks, both of them have been obsessed with watering prunes, trimming and whatever else you do with pumpkins to make them grow, that neither Mr nor Mrs Prune remembered Susie's birthday. The pumpkin competition was held on Halloween night. I went trick-or-treating first with Dad before meeting the gang at Freaky Square. Everyone had awesome Halloween costumes. Everyone except me. Dad, as usual, had totally forgotten it was his job to do my Halloween costume, so five minutes before we left the house, he fashioned this costume together with things he found in the kitchen. He's called Count Spatula. He has a spatula at his back, another spatula in one of his arms, a spatula in the other arm, and his cape is made out of a red tea towel. I know what you're thinking. Why do my parents need three spatulas? And I'm afraid I don't have an answer to that. Needless to say, I removed the costume the first chance I got and found the rest of the danger gang near the front of the crowd that was gathering in Freaky Square. Nice costume, I said as Molly made her entire head disappear, terrifying a group of three-year-old kids. Jamelia had come to the Freaky Fray come as the Freaky Freybug, complete with glowing green eyes, swimming goggles with glow-in-the-dark paint. Katie showed up in the mermaid from Freaky Falls in a wiry green wig and some homemade tail. Eric had a cardboard shark held so no one would notice the difference if it rained and he turned into an actual shark. Charlie had been covered in rubbish and he said he was the creaker. And everyone thought Ronnie's Frankenstein mask was super realistic until they realised he wasn't actually wearing a mask. Okay, that's probably a little bit mean. Frankenstein's mon monster is way better looking than Ronnie Nutbolt. Where's Susie, I asked, realising she was the only one of our danger gang missing, but no one had seen her. When it was time for the pumpkin unveiling, three very important looking officials came out and introduced themselves as the judging panel. Piers, Snor Piers Snorgan of the telly was there, reporting with his film crew, so one of them stepped closer to being rich and famous. I slipped, slipped away from the gang to look for Susie and found her hiding around the back of the stage. Hey, they're about to start judging, I said. Great, she said with a sigh, and then took a huge bite out of the huge slice of pumpkin pie. What's up? I asked. I'm just bored of watching mum and dad try to outdo each other with a stupid orange delicious pumpkin, she said, taking another gulp of stupid orange delicious pumpkin pie. Want some? she asked. I shook my head. No thanks, I'm stuffed. Mum bought a box of 12 donuts for trick-or-treaters and I accidentally ate seven when she wasn't looking. But I guess one of your parents is about to win a big trophy. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's awesome for one of them, but it means the other one's going to lose, she said. Yeah, that sucks, I realised as Susie gobbled down another mouthful of pumpkin pie. I'd slow down if I were you, you're going to turn into a pumpkin, I joked as she scoffed the pie. Well, at least mum and dad might notice me then. She laughed and finished off the gooey orange slice of pie before we both headed back to watch the unveiling. There were seven entries in total, including Miss Tinky and a man who sells me nutter crunchies from the ice cream van but it was clear to everyone that only two people stood a chance of winning first up was susie's mum's pumpkin it was so big and had to be carried in on a forklift the freaky crowd burst into applause all the judges were scribbling notes on their clipboard nodding their heads and mrs prune was beaming Piers snorgan announced in my opinion this has to be the winning pumpkin because it has to be the biggest pumpkin in the world 
In fact, unless anyone can prove that pumpkins grow on other planets, this has to be the biggest pumpkin in the universe. But, as usual, his opinion turned out to be utter rubbish. The ground started to rumble and searchlights suddenly lit up in the dusty sky and I fa- and found something enormous, something round, something orange, flying through the air, being hoisted in by a giant crane over the rooftop and trees. Susie sighed. Here comes my dad's pumpkin. We all looked up in amazement. F- nut- Freaky went nuts. Everyone threw their trick-or-treat bags into the air in celebration as the second giant pumpkin was lowered next to Mrs. Prune's entry. Mr. Prune was looking very smug and avoiding his wife's glare. Piers Snorgan ran over to the exclusive interview with the Prunes. Mr. Prune, how on earth did you manage to grow a pumpkin this big? What's your secret? Piers asked. Well, I planted it a little earlier than usual this year, back in March, on the night of that big storm, Mr. Prune answered. And what about yours, Mrs. Prune? demanded Piers. So did I, she replied. The moment I heard that, my heart stopped. Storm. If that storm had anything to do with these pumpkins, then we were in for something freaky. And we'll have to find out what that is tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. I hope you're enjoying our Danger Gang book. I will see you very soon. Bye.